Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is the story of someone getting back at someone with revenge after being wronged. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, the city skips my house when replumbing the sewer line, causing my backyard to fill with sewage. The second story, the boss refused to pay me, so I said we would meet in court. The third story, co-workers stop bothering me after my words. And the first story is, took a year, but I sued the unsuable. So after a year-long battle, this finally came to a close. Maybe not my revenge, but revenge on my behalf. A little backstory, I bought a house about 5 years ago and in 3 years flooded 3 times. It never flooded in the 40 years before. Thanks climate change! Finally, after the third flood, my wife and I were financially able to move out and sell the house for a loss. We search around and find our dream house, or so we thought. After living in the new house for about 6 months, we noticed something very peculiar. Whenever it would rain hard, the bathtub would backfill with sewage and the toilets wouldn't flush. So we called a plumber. The plumbers were awesome and told us that our sewer lines had broken between the house and the city sewer line and while we could try and spot fix, we'd probably need to replace the entire line. Ouch! Having just dumped a bunch of cash on a new house and taking a loss on the old house, we said to try and keep it as cheap as possible. They dug up where the line was broken. Broken is an understatement. The line had all but dissolved. We were going to have to replace the whole line, about $5,000. Not the best time, but okay, let's do it. Once they exposed the line the best they could, I got a call from the plumbers. The line is broken up so badly, they can't find where the residential line ties into the city line or tap. Now the homeowner is responsible for the residential line, but the city's responsible for the tap and the main line. I asked the plumber what's needed. He says we need to get the city plans and dig to uncover the tap. More digging equals more money. At this point it's been two weeks and I just want to SH in my own house and take a shower. Okay, dig the hole. They dig a 4x4x10 four by four by hole and find nothing. We double check the city's plans and they're right on where the plans say the tap is. Now we have to deal with the city. We call 311 as directed and after sitting on hold for 3 hours, a city official sends us the same plans with the location where we dug. We call back and say we already dug there and there's no tap. Getting nowhere with the city, my wife finally goes down to City Hall, and after spending a vacation day, hanging around waiting for someone, she finally gets in to meet with an official. Let's call him Richard. Richard prints off the same plans as we've already been given, and says we need to dig where it's marked. My wife takes out her phone and says, look, it's not there. At this point he mutters to himself, and takes out a pen and draws on the plans, marking the actual location. It shows the residential line dog-legging from the original drawings, and is about 10 feet west of the initial location. It was apparent that he doesn't want to waste his valuable cushy government job time on my wife. It was pretty obvious he just made something up to get her out of his office. Plumbers come out, dig a second 4x4x10 four by four by hole, read more money, and surprise surprise, the tap isn't there either. Fun! Back to City Hall, and another vacation day wasted waiting for Richard. At this point, we don't want another hand-drawn map. Someone from the city needs to come out and mark where this D tap is. They come out and I burn a vacation day to wait around for them. To their credit, they got down in the sewer, did some digging around, and mark a new spot between the two big holes. Finally, a real location. Plumbers come out and dig a third hole, and if you think they actually found the tap, then you would be mistaken. At this point the entire backyard is destroyed. Piles of dirt everywhere, the lawn is dead, the trees are dead, it's ruined. Our beautiful new house's backyard is literally SH. Back down to Richard's office, another vacation day burned, and we are livid. We remain calm, but insist that we must not have been tied into the city's main line. There was no tap. Now you might be th thinking, how did we not know? Six months of sewage just piled up in your backyard? In the backyard there's a large dirt mound that had been turned into a nicely landscaped forest. Lots of room to absorb the sewage that only two people would produce. But it rained hard. The dirt was saturated and would backfill the bathtub and the toilets wouldn't flush. Richard doesn't accept responsibility, but does send out the contractor who did all the work for taps in my area. The contractor comes out and I get the full story. Two years prior, while the previous owner was doing improvements and not living in the house, the main line of the sewer was replaced. Basically they slide the new tubing into the old tubing, underground, and then go in and install new taps for each house. Since no one was living in the house, they couldn't get into the backyard and told the city they did not service our house. I am furious. It's been three months, about $20,000 and all the wasted time and vacation just because Richard was too lazy to do his job and make one call to the contractor to sort it out. Now, remember how my first house flooded three times? I learned my lesson dealing with people and once we knew we had to talk to the city, we recorded everything. 
Every phone call, every email, I videoed the contractor and his explanation. Everything, and all obtained legally. In my state, you have to have both people's consent to be recorded. He installs a tab, and I take the first shower at my house in three months. I am ready to act. I go down once again to Richard's office. I show him everything, and want to file a claim. I agree to cover the cost of the residential line, as that's my responsibility. However, I want the city to reimburse the cost to dig the unnecessary holes. I think I have a good case. Pursuant to our city, we had to file a claim before starting any work and provide three estimates in writing to file a claim. Since none of that was done and could not be done after the fact, Richard denied the claim right there. Left without words, I walk away completely defeated. I perk up on the way home after calling my wife and being reminded that I have some lawyer friends. Surely one of them could help or knows someone who can. Unbeknownst to me, my state has something called sovereign immunity. Basically, you can try and sue the city or state but it'll be thrown out immediately, and Richard knows this. No credible lawyer will help me pursue this case, because they know I would just be wasting my money. I'm pretty much SOL. After months of calling around to try and find anyone to help, I've resigned myself to defeat. Almost a year goes by. The loans I took out are about to start coming due, and I have no idea how I'm going to pay for it. All communication with Richard in his office is blocked. I've also tried his boss, and crickets. I tried going back down there, but Richard refused to meet with me. I finally reached out to my council member in a last ditch effort. I include a synopsis, along with all the evidence I have. I don't expect much. One hour after hitting send, my phone rings. It's my council member, and she's livid about how we were treated. She has a meeting scheduled with the head of public works for later that week. She doesn't promise anything, but says she's going to fight for me until they kick her out of the building. After the meeting, she calls me on her way back to the office. The head of public works has accepted full responsibility. She wants receipts for everything. The plumber, pay stubs showing the vacation we took, phone logs from the time we spent on hold, the quote from the landscaper to fix the backyard, all of it. She has them all in her inbox by the time she makes it back to her office. This was about three weeks ago. Yesterday, I met with my council member at her office. Me, thank you so much. My wife and I cannot repay you for all you've done. Her, it was my pleasure. We chit-chat for a bit. Her, here's a check for what you're owed. Me, this is so great. We can pay off the loan and finally get someone to fix our yard. Wait, this is much more than we need. Her, you forgot to include emotional distress. I added it for you. Wink. Oh, and if you ever have any issues, you won't have to worry about dealing with Richard. He no longer works there. Just come to me. I become good friends with the head of public works. Me, oh my God, you're literally the best person I know. There's anything I can do? Her, elections are in the fall. Maybe you could turn out and vote? So I went home, paid off everything and the landscapers are coming out next week. Oh, and I am volunteering on a re-election campaign. The second story is, won't train me to comp employees meals and then fire me over a short bank? Here's your Department of Labor Inquisition. I started at a roadhouse bar with the city's name as the first title word. Everyone knew this bar. Coming from 10 years of bartending and serving experience, the hiring manager was as nice as can be. I get a spot and quickly prove my worth. I'm the opener, trusted with keys and deposits within three months. Their turnover rate was crazy high, and I was soon to find out why. It's a Sunday, and 85% of the bar staff drink heavily. They were all tanked the night before, so I'm the only opener as usual. Two employees come in with families for lunch, so I do my best to earn a tip. Their bills are ready, and both tell me to comp it, which is okay, because we officially get one comped meal each week, family included. Both bills come out to about $60 to $70. They both tip me well. End of the night, and I can't find a manager to comp out my tickets. No big deal, says closing bartender. We'll just do your tickets, and you'll get cash the next day. Stupid, stupid me. I agree. So goes about six weeks of stringing me along, telling me my money's coming. When I make a group chat comment to the owner, he jokingly says, looks like a bar donation. Look, I'll get to it. It was not a joke. He refused to pay me for almost three months. I hit my final straw when I had a walkout table for over a hundred bucks. Boss said it was coming out of my comp. I lost my SH, called the cops. Cops came and basically tell me the whole situation is a civil matter and to call the Department of Labor. Okay, sounds good. Terry, a-hole owner, dodges the DOL for about a month, not answering emails, and is out on business each time they make a stop. I know what he's doing, so I decide to go in as a patron late one night. Sure enough, he's drunk as F and talking SH to another coworker. So I call the one contact at the DOL, who said to call any time, day or night if I saw him. Police come and he's arrested, makes bail the next morning and is out on bond, asks me to meet up. I agree, with my lawyer driving me and recording our meeting. He tried to threaten me, and when that didn't work, to cry, but I told him to pay me or F off. He then said Sarah said the same thing. Who's Sarah? Just the woman who was already in the same place that I was, and had him over a barrel for the same SH. She had a big walkout, over 200, and he kept her paycheck, 
so she took him to court as well. He still refused to pay me that day, so I gleefully told him that I'd see him in court alongside Sarah. My check came in three working days, and it included both comps, the walkout and full minimum wage for training days, which I didn't expect. Sarah went ahead and took him to court and wiped the floor with him. I got a nice paycheck of almost $600, and they are now shut down as of last January. F you, Terry. I'd like to say two things for clarification. One, I was trained as an FOH manager while serving, and comps are the only thing we didn't go over. When the owner himself or his family were being served, I only told the boss it was the owner's order incoming. Nothing would be rung in, and the food would be noted by the cooks for inventory reasons. Two, comps are meal compensations for working there. Every employee gets one free meal a week, no limits, besides eight people on one bill, and no special alcohol included. It was a pretty nice perk. Yes, we got meals on shifts, but this deal included family and such, without needing to work that day. No one showed me how to do this my first day running front of house, and being the only server three months in, with only monetary manager codes. Sorry for the confusion. And the last story is... No, no, no. At my job, I work with about 30 people, all in a room of cubicles. It's a small office, so if you're talking to your cubicle neighbor, there's a good chance Jane and Bob on the other side can hear your entire conversation. Most days, everyone is cordial and keeps their talking volume low. Most of us wear headphones to blank out the monotony of data entry. One woman in the middle of the office thinks she's the next Whitney, or maybe Reba, possibly a Christina, whatever it is. She thinks everyone appreciates a random singing, or worse, off-key humming. She's been asked to lower her voice, be aware of the people around her, and told to keep quiet, especially if I can hear you over my noise-canceling headphones. She's been reporting to the boss, yet we're still subjected to a daily concert of tone-deaf singing. I tried the spray water approach. Who made that song? They probably sound much better. Rubber band gun shooting at her, even between the eyes, and even sending her polite messages to lower her volume didn't work. Today I decided that if she was going to sing or hum, I would repeatedly say no until she stopped. The first time took about three minutes of me saying no, no, nope, nah, -uh, no way, no. I gradually increased my displeasure until she stopped. After the third time, she would start, and I would know her right away. It got to where she would barely get a sound out before I started my no. My neighbors that knew what was going on were trying not to break out laughing. I was able to have an enjoyable day at work, listening to my music without any horrible bellowing. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.